air systems in Honeybee and Energy Plus. Uh, particularly, we're going to be looking at uh, mechanical fresh air ventilation, mechanical exhaust ventilation, and natural ventilation. So let's get started first with um, uh, um, HVAC systems because that's going to be a prerequisite for understanding how it works. And something in the past tutorials we didn't really discuss is how the model um, is outputting the heating and cooling energy. And to dive a little bit deeper into this, we can uh, take a look at a HVAC component over here um, called the HB Ideal Air System. This is a hypothetical um, mechanical system that provides as much heating or cooling as a zone calls for. So it doesn't have a size, it's an infinite size, and it will supply as much energy as required to maintain the set points, uh, the thermostat set points in the room. Now this is by default uh, modeled in your model, uh, but to explicitly do this, we just need to hook this up. So uh, we could take from this model side here into the rooms, and then the rooms um, need to go to uh, these two locations. So what I'm gonna do is put a data marker here, and then this will go into here, and then this will go into there. So now um, I'm gonna also make a little bit more room here. Uh, so now we uh, can, can sort of move this around as needed. Um, this should um, create the same um, the same results as you had in the last runs. It's just explicitly adding it. But when we add this, uh, there's some more um, uh, settings that we can now access. So you'll see here there's an economizer, there's demand control ventilation, there's a sensible heat recovery, latent heat control recovery and these are all important for the ventilation systems there's also the heating and cooling temperatures that will be delivered to the zone and the limits on uh, uh, or the capacity of the ideal um, air system if you want to include that for our sake we're not going to change these we are going to look at the um, at the other inputs here so for the economizer, for example, it says the default is a differential dry bulb econ economizer. What that means is that this will um, supply ventilation air or outside air to the, um, to the, um, to the, to the uh, system and reduce the amount of cooling um, that the, the, it provides. So whenever the outside temperature is um, helpful to the HVAC system, it's going to take advantage of that. Um, I'm wondering why this turned red. Oh, because it's not a toggle, that's why. Because this is a text input. Um, so we can put a multi-line data, no economizer, or um, what's the word? looking for differential dry bulb, no spaces, or the last one is a differential and enthalpy, like that. And then we can um, hook this up to a, um, what's this called? List, in, uh, list item like that and then control it this way so that we can select. It's, it's like a little kludge together item selector. Honeybee used to ship with an item selector and now it's gone. So this is now my solution. So now um, if it's at zero, this returns a, a no economizer at one, it's differential dry bulb, and at two, it's differential enthalpy. And then we can plug this right into the economizer here. The uh, something you should notice is that by default, it's on differential dry bulb. So that should equate to the previous runs that you've done. 
uh, but I'd also uh, it's it's worth trying out the no economizer to see what difference it makes in your um, design. Okay, so that's the economizer. Demand controlled ventilation is just a toggle. So let me do this. And false means that it does not have demand controlled ventilation. True means that it does. And what it is is whenever the zone is occupied with people, uh, in other words, there's a demand for fresh air, it will turn on. Otherwise, it will turn off. And this will change the um, schedule effectively when the ventilation is operating. Uh, the next two are heat recovery. So this is going to give you a uh, sort of um, efficiency of, the, of a heat recovery ventilator. And most ventilators that are on the market these days are about 70% efficient, um, although it can vary um, quite a bit. So I'm just going to uh, plug this in here so you can see um, that will increase the efficiency of the economizer overall. Um, so as we do this, one thing that would be helpful is to have an output uh, when we run the simulation for the ventilation rate. And unfortunately, Honeybee does not ship with a, um, a ventilation rate output. Oh, did I hook this up wrong? It says room object has no attribute units. I bet when I hooked up Yeah, when I, I hooked up the ideal load system in the wrong place, so it has to be connected to a uh, to a room, not to the whole model. So it really needs to go here in our in our um, work structure between the room, which is here, and then the output goes into there, and then this output goes into there. So that should um, that should remedy this. And I'm going to do this, put group all these together. So we don't get too lost. And let's see if this works now. Yeah, now it's working. Okay, so um, I was saying before that we need to um, output, would be useful to output the ventilation rate uh, that we're getting so we can compare things. And um, by default, Honeybee doesn't ship with that, but we can actually um, program this to include any output that um, Energy Plus has, uh, not just what Honeybee has access to. And the, the way to access these is through this RDD result data dictionary. And in Honeybee Energy, there is a RDD reader right there. So we plug this in here and we look for say airflow, I'm guessing. And this will give you all of the outputs related to airflow, have airflow in the name. And we've got none, maybe ventilation. There, you can see all the different ones related to ventilation here. And in order to tell how much ventilation there is for mechanical systems, we probably want this uh, zone mechanical, there it is, zone mechanical ventilation air changes rate or air changes per hour. And I would say we also want the zone where is it? We also want oh I see. So um, this only gives outputs that are um, available for because of the model that we ran. Later, when we look at natural ventilation, we're also going to want uh, some additional outputs. And uh, specifically, we want all of the airflow through the zone, not just the airflow that is caused by the mechanical system. And that's called the zone ventilation uh, air change rate, which is not on this list. So I am going to include those so let's see what's the easiest way to do this is probably I'm going to just copy this and paste it 
and then I can delete some of this zone mechanical ventilation air change there like that and then the other one that I want is the zone ventilation air change rate like so all right, now we're done with the RDDs. I'm going to delete these. And we're going to have to make a little output variable um, um, custom component here. Uh, because unfortunately, Honeybee used to ship with this, I believe, uh, but now it no longer does. So we're going to make our own. And this is going to be a simple Python um, uh, script. I'm not very good at Python, um, but um, I think this is this much I can do. Uh, so we're going to make two variables here. Uh, instead of x and y, we'll name this variable one and this one variable two. And then inside this, double click on it and a little pop-up will um, show up and this is where your code will go. And um, we want the A here is, is um, the output and um, to print um, a multi-line text, you need uh, three quotes like that and then a backslash. And so, um, and the um, text that we want in here uh, I'm taking from a model file, which is, I'll show you in another video, uh, but this is uh, output variable, um, and this includes variable one and variable two, and then uh, the backslash at the end there, and then we want to um, have three quotes again, dot format, and then define variable one and variable two, and this will have it. Uh, so it's looking for the input variable one in this term right here, variable one. And then we want to um, print that whole thing. So this is this whole thing is A, so we're printing A. I'm going to test it, and it works. Yay! So, um, and just to make sure, do this, and there's your two additional outputs, mechanical ventilation, zone ventilation, and this is going to go into additional strings right here. Actually, I'm going to turn this off first, right there, and... Just to uh, make this run a little bit faster, I'm going to unplug these. So we're just getting zone energy use. And I'm going to hit, I think I said no economizer. Yeah, I'm going to change this to a differential economizer so we can see this difference. And demand controlled ventilation is set to false. So I'm going to let this run. It's going to take a second. And when it comes back, I'm going to show you how to hook up uh, new variables like this to visualize them. So we've run it with 19 warnings, no severe errors. Um, notice that there isn't a separate heading here, end use for ventilation, just heating and cooling. The way that this, this ideal load system works is it's just taking care of the heating and cooling. It is not accounting for how that heating and cooling is delivered, and that also includes the ventilation. So the fan energy associated with the ventilation is not included in this calculation. Um, so to uh, visualize the outputs that we just um, looked at, these two, we need to make a custom, uh, read a custom result right there. 
and I'm going to hook up the SQL to this and I'm going to put an output name for the ventilation and it's not clear to me if I'm getting any results or not but let's see so now I'm going to put an hourly plot from Ladybug in here like so oh actually you know what we do a monthly plot what am I missing data yeah there's no data there okay I did a little troubleshooting and I found that there was a space at the or a hard return at the end of this um, per hour and that messed up my output I reran it and now we've got some data here and uh, I can show it to you this is the monthly ventilation um, from the economizer and you can see that it ranges between 0.5 air changes per hour uh, maybe I should turn off the compass here there uh, between 0.5 air changes per hour all the way up to 5.19 in the summertime um, so this during this time that economizer is taking advantage of the free cooling we're getting from the air whereas in the winter time it's doing the minimal amount of ventilation that's required for fresh air for breathing so that gives you a little bit of a window into what it is doing and um, in the next video, we're going to look at a supplemental mechanical ventilation uh, in addition to the, the fresh air. So I'll talk to you then.